Well, hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Adam. Thanks for hanging out with me again today. And on today's video, I'm going to have a trio of fun to show you. But before we get into that, I want to give some shout outs to some stickers that I just got. Um, so Brian Mulcahy um, sent me a few stickers of his channel. Uh, recently sent him some of mine, but he sent me the big uh, Brian Mulcahy RC. Sent me two of the smaller ones, which I like the black. Um, both of them look cool. And then he also sent me some really cool ones of the uh, duck van <laughs> drawing that he did for me. Um, so these will get up on the board. Um, definitely the big one and probably a duck van. Probably keep the smaller ones for my laptop or something like that. Um, but if you guys haven't, go down in the description uh, once you get done here and check out Brian's channel. It's a new channel, so there's not a ton of content there yet, but I'm sure as uh, more people subscribe, he will get more enthusiastic about it and start cranking out some more stuff. You know, so go check him out. And also over at Team AU Family RC, John uh, sent me his stickers, which, you know, put up big pictures of them, but a really nice looking sticker with the uh, Kyosho Phaser uh, Chevelle on there and then he sent me some tiny ones and one of those has already been allocated to the rock crawler so thank you John for those I will link his description down below um, go check his channel out as well again fairly small channel so go give him some support he's got a lot of rock crawler stuff on there and he really likes the small crawlers and he has a whole bunch of different stuff with different random 3d printed stuff I've never even seen before um, so go check his channel out as well you may learn something like I have anyway guys <clears throat> Let me uh, stop and get these on the board and then uh, I'll show you what the status of the sticker board looks like. So we got the Team AU Family RC and then we got Brian's uh, uh, Brian McKay RC there. And then over here is the little van. So very cool, thank you guys. So now on to the main event. And um, this is taking a little bit of time because there's three cars to show you guys. So first off, we have the Aero Avante Junior, or the slot car edition. So this is not RC. Um, this is just one of the Tamiya slot cars. And they're really cool. They're very, very detailed. Um, they're fun little builds and, you know, something you can do in one evening. Um, some of them require minor painting. Uh, most of them you can get away with just taking them out, slapping decals on there. Um, I think this one, all it required was a little bit of black on the rear. Um, but otherwise, it was... Um, pretty much just slap stickers on it and go. These stickers on here are very well cut out and they fit so perfectly. They do a really good job on these. And you know, all it is is there's a switch underneath. You turn it on, you go, you drop it on the track. You drop it on the track and then it just goes around the track. The little guide wheels keep it in the little slot in the, in the track. But we got this one because there's more. So this one is the Aerovante Star Unit version, which this is a 1 12th, I believe, um, version of the Aerovante RC car. Now, the cool thing with this one is it is an actual RC. It has a little bumper on the front with the guide wheels on there to resemble the junior version, but this one is actually a true RC. Now, I don't have the electronics sorted in here yet. Um, I need to get the ESC mounted in here. Everything else is in there and ready to go. And again, this one went together very easily. These basically snap together. Uh, you know, you have a few screws you have to put in for like the guide wheels, but everything else in there just clicks into place. Um, so not a whole lot of experience needed or tools needed to build one of those. This one is a nice hybrid. Um, a lot of it kind of clicks together and snaps in place, but you do need some tools because this one obviously is bigger and you have to mount things to it. So you do need just a JIS screwdriver and that's pretty much it. Uh, well, some snips to snip off the stuff off the parts trees. But otherwise, very limited tooling needed for this. Um, you will need to cut out the body. Now this is a Lexan body and the, the wing. Um, it's all, all molded in one big shell, uh, just like the Aerovante is. Um, the only drawback to this kit for a little kid is cutting the shell out. It is a little bit difficult to cut the shell out nicely um, just because there's a lot of starts and stops and curves and twists and the body is very curvy. Um, so, you know, a little kid will need help cutting the body out on this, but painting 
you really only have to blast it with one color. Now, I did smoke on the windshield uh, just to, you know, make it a little bit more RC looking. Um, that, and I don't like putting stickers on big curved sections like that windshield. Um, eventually, something's going to lift and start peeling off. So I just decided to smoke the, the main canopy and then put the decals around it. So I just trimmed off what was going to be on the canopy and just stuck the rest of the decals on there. So this one has steering, forward, reverse, all that stuff. Does have some suspension, not much. So the suspension on here is just like the grasshopper to where there's a long threaded uh, screw going through here and then there's a spring in between the suspension arm and the shock tower and the bolt or screw goes up and down through the shock tower and the spring just compresses in between them. Um, it's perfect for this little car. Um, it has maybe a little over a half inch of ground clearance, you know, maybe. <laughs> Ground clearance wise, this one is very low to the ground. So I don't know if this is actually gonna make it out to the track or not. It's definitely intended for, you know, driving around indoors and on hard surfaces like a driveway or in your basement or something. Slick tires and there's only maybe, maybe a half inch of clearance between the front bumper and the rear uh, motor guard back here. So not, much suspension at all. So if I do take it out to the track, the bottom of this is gonna get chewed up. So we have the medium, we have the small, which you guys can't even see the small on camera. <laughs> now, what everybody's been waiting to see, the big one. So this is the Aerovante on the DFO2 chassis. Now this is the first time I have built a DFO2 and it was you know, really easy. There wasn't anything difficult about it. Um, I see some similarities between other cars with this, but it is definitely kind of one of its own um, in some of the design. Um, the overall build of all three of these was super simple. Um, this one has the slotted battery cutouts, kind of like the TT01. Uh, it does have a vented uh, motor hole here, so it can get fresh air in here and also any debris drop out from underneath the motor if it uh, gets dirt and dust inside. Um, the interesting thing about this one is the center drive shaft, unlike you know the TT02B or T you know, TT02s, those type of vehicles that have the exposed drive shaft up top inside of the chassis, um, this one actually has a slot so it has this big long cover here that covers up where the drive shaft goes. And that drive shaft goes into a big long tunnel molded into the chassis. And basically you get the rear diff and everything mounted in here and then you get the front started and you kind of just push the front. It, it's interesting how it goes in. You just kind of shove the front in and then drop it in and then you put in the front diff housing and everything up there and everything is kind of locked into place there. Um, overall suspension is nice. Um, it's a little soft and bouncy uh, the way it is, but I think it'll be fine on the track. Um, it's interesting. So it kind of has a hybrid uh, drivetrain system. So the drive cups are like on a TTO2. And I'm just using TTO2 as an example because pretty much everybody's seen one of those, I think. Um, it's got the plastic cups with the steel shaft um, in both the transmission and the wheels and then it has a steel dog bone in between so it's kind of like a little hybrid of there so it doesn't have the plastic dog bones like the tto2s do it has the steel ones but it has the plastic um outdrive cups um diffs standard gear diffs um you know again much like tto2 TTO, tto1s kind of that style um very smooth very quiet um overall a really nice kit again the body on this one is kind of the sticking point. Um, if you're not good at cutting out bodies, this one's going to pose trouble for you because you have these cutouts that you have to make in the body up front and in the rear. Um, and again, the body is very curvy, like back here, it just kind of curves and curves and curves, uh, which makes it a little bit more difficult to cut out, but not bad. Now, body mounting, it only has two body posts here and here, and I was worried about it kind of being floppy, uh, but overall it feels pretty good. Um, back here, I actually, well here, let's pop this off. <clears throat> and again, I did the 
um, window in smoke just like I did the medium sized one and then put all the decals on around it and I just like the way it looks you know it actually looks like a canopy now instead of just big black sticker um, the decals on this one were a little bit more um, entailed let's say stickers on the tiny one super easy stickers one on the on the medium size one definitely got a little bit more difficult especially with this big long white one here um, but not bad these big longer ones you know you really kind of have to make sure you have it in the right place before you start sticking it down just because you kind of have to match the flow and the swoops of the body and everything but overall everything went on really nice so this one is a solid one piece sticker so that one was really easy this one's a two piece you have to be a little bit more careful with that one they had to make a two piece um sticker over here because it has this bump out so that little bump out here is to accommodate for the steering horn as the wheels turn all the way to the right the steering horn goes all the way to the right and it um uh, is we're gonna bump up against that so they had to put that little bump in there but overall the bodies came out really nice the decals look really nice and of course it's in ps16 metallic blue so the color looks phenomenal so nothing spectacular on the interior. We just have the Sportune motor, Hobby Wing 1060, and a um, GP5 for $20 servo in this. Um, the body mounts up front, you have basically the body pin that goes through the body mount and then the body sits on top of it. Go to Amazon, I'll put a, try to remember to put a link below. Get these little foam body washers. One, it stops the rattling so when you put the the body pin underneath the body and then you body pin on top you know there's a significant you know eighth inch gap in between there so your lexan body just sits there and goes dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig the whole time you're running it so you smush one of these little foam body washers in there and then when you put the body pin on there the body is actually pressed down a little tiny bit against that foam and it just quiets the the car up a lot now on the back they wanted you to put a body pin in sideways but the problem is if you put it in sideways like this, sorry, I didn't mean to flick you off. So if you put the body pin in sideways like this, it's basically resting down here on the body because this tunnel is so narrow. So what I did is I just stacked up one, two, three um, foam body washers back there. And now when you put the body on, the, the body is actually pressing down against those body washers. And when you put the pin in, you know, there is no movement back here and it's not pressing it down against anything hard that's gonna end up denting it or scarring the paint or anything like that. So just a, a tip for you guys, um, anytime you have a really nice body, you don't wanna get it scratched up and you have the body pins underneath or if you're just resting it on body pad, uh, body post pads, these things still work really well. They will smash down and, you know, conform to the thickness that you have. Um, but, you know, I put them on pretty much all my cars. I think they're like eight bucks for like a hundred of them. Now these aren't the self stick ones. These are just the foam pads, but you know, I love them. Um, other than that, you know, the build went really, really well. Uh, the diffs, uh, I don't think we'll ever have problems with those. Uh, nice oil field shocks. Like I said, they're a little bit loose feeling. Um, so I may need to either put some thicker oil in or um, something there, but overall, we'll give it a try the way it is. Um, a similar steering style, well, like the TTO2s, again, you know, I'm just referencing TTO2s because, you know, most guys know them. You basically have a uh, driven linkage here, driven linkage here with the crossbar connecting to the servo, and then when the servo pushes, both of the uh, link bars push out on the servo, uh, uh, on the um, steering arms. Now, these are threaded turnbuckles in the front, so you can adjust your toe in the front. The rear is fixed, uh, both in, you know, the degree of the arms, and it has no camber adjustment in there. There's just solid links up top. Now, there's solid links up top on the front, too, for your camber adjustment, but, you know, it's a four-wheel drive buggy, and it's a, you know, not a high-end four-wheel drive buggy. These aren't the Avante series. Uh, it just carries the Avante name, so it is a much, you know, lower end fun having kit uh all plastic but it still you know should be a really really good fun uh runner so unfortunately it has been raining for the last couple days so none of these are going to get out and get run like i said i still need to get the um 
ESC mounted into this. Obviously, this one I don't have track for. It's much more just for a showpiece. So this one will get out of the track. Uh, right now, it is just entirely too soaking wet and muddy out there, and I'm still traumatized from having to clean up the BBX from last week's run. <laughs> so no run video right now, but I will get this one out definitely on the track. This one will probably just you know film some footage of it running around in the living room or you know out in the garage or something. You know, unfortunately, the basement, it just doesn't have enough room at the moment. But I hope you guys enjoyed kind of the three-pack of cars. Um, you know, I didn't do any build footage of these, unfortunately. Um, honestly, I got, a, I got a movie put on, and I started building this, and I completely forgot about taking any pictures of any of it. You know, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, again, there will be some follow-up of them running, but I did want to get something out on them. Anyway, guys, thanks for listening to me ramble on as normal. Everybody out there, you guys be happy, be healthy, be safe, and I will catch you on the next one. See ya.